Um, we, uh, right now, coming up, we have Dr. Nancy Richmond, who, let's see here, let's see what we have, and I apologize again, I am not the guy. Uh, you want to introduce yourself? She'll do a way better job than I will. There you go. Hello. <laughs> hey, everyone. Hey, good to see you. I know I'm one of the last talks, so you're probably really, really tired. Um, this is a lightning talk, which is a little bit different for me. Usually I'm used to giving three-hour classes at FIU, okay? Um, so I'm going to do my best to be really quick and um, entertaining. One of the things that I've noticed with the WordCamp Miami group throughout the years um, presenting here is that some of you hide from me when I try to take selfies. It's true. And I love social media, but sometimes you don't. But uh, some of you are awesome at it. So we're actually going to be giving some awards out today um, at the closing ceremony from the Social Media Association. Um, if you could hit this. So I have a lot of followers. Um, I spend a lot of time on social media. I have over 140,000 followers on Twitter. Um, I, I practice what I preach on LinkedIn, 15,000, Instagram, 16,000, and Facebook, 8,000. Okay. So I spend a lot of time thinking about social media and also creating content. So this is uh, some amazing marketing faculty. Our chair, our marketing chair is actually right over here. I was fortunate that he hired me um, to teach social media for our students. We have an awesome master's in uh, marketing program at FIU. We also have our certificate and a minor um, for our undergraduate students in social media. And this is uh, some of our marketing faculty as well as some of our board members from the Social Media Association. So uh, you guys probably have seen us. So, okay, so lightning. All right, so five social media best practices. Uh, we're going to do this really fast. Okay, next. So everyone has a story, okay? Snapchat is dead. So if people are using Snapchat, it's going away. So you can just forget about it now because every time I poll my students, less and less and less people are using Snapchat and more and more and more people are using Instagram stories. Next. All right, so how are you going to get engagement on Instagram stories? Stories are critically important, and stories has all of these really, really cool new features that just came out in the last few months. If you're not there, you have to be there. In 2018, um, stories is going to be huge and big, and you can get way more views on your stories than you can actually on your posts. So actually, can you go back? Um, so uh, one of the things that you need to think about is uh, live video. Uh, also, selfie stickers are pretty cool. If you don't know what those are, investigate it more, all right? Um, and you want to use the highlights. You can actually highlight your stories now on Instagram, which is really cool because before your stories just kind of went away, and now you can actually highlight them. Don't be afraid to use different text, okay? Don't be afraid to use different colors, different font shapes. It's supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be creative. Um, and GIFs are also something you can use, okay? So, boomerang, boomerangs are cool, all right? So if you don't know what a boomerang is, that's a boomerang, all right? Um, so think about getting creative with your content and using um, apps to do that. So here are some cool apps, Canva. How many in the crowd are using Canva? Canva rocks, you're all awesome, all right? So uh, a lot of people use Photoshop, but Canva makes you an awesome graphic designer immediately, okay? And also, um, Photoshop Express, these are some of my favorite apps that I use. I'm story maker for Instagram. Stories are it. So you've got to use this app to help you make it the right size. It's very helpful. Stories for Instagram, okay? Boomerangs, um, Giphy, LightX is really cool because had anyone used LightX? Okay, that's a really cool app because it helps you get rid of the background. You know when there's something uncool in the background? Like I had a photo recently where there was this restroom sign and I don't want that in my picture. That was like the center. And so I took it out, okay? I took it out with LightX and just made it, blurred it out. You can also put like the ocean behind you. You can do all kinds of really cool things with that. Ah, so emotions. Emotions are critically important. Critically important. And what emotion spreads faster in social media? Quiz. What do you guys think? How many people think it's anger? How many people think that it's disappointment? No one. 
Oh, they did. All right, sadness, rage, yeah. awe, joy. Okay, so the answer is rage. And that's not good because we were just talking about customer service, right? That means when your customers get angry and they have so much rage, it's going viral. So that's why we have to respond quickly on social media. The second one is awe. So awe gets our hearts racing, okay? So when we feel awe, it actually gets our hearts racing, which is really important because that can help drive engagement and help things go viral. Our age. Excellent. The future is here. Are you guys ready? Okay. So are you guys ready for the future? We actually have, these are mine. Okay. Look. So how many of you guys have a set of these? You have a set of these? Augmented reality, virtual reality is coming to social media. We are all going to be living in an augmented virtual reality world. And I can tell you in 2018, I can see that this is going to be happening with Facebook and Google, all right? Facebook and Google have invested a lot of time and a lot of money in this, and this is going to be our future. So um, these are our key players here, all right? So these are our key, I mean, how cool is that? And so you guys know the difference between augmented reality and virtual reality, I know. Um, and so virtual reality is when you're inside this headset, right? But augmented reality is when you look at things and you can still see the world that you're in, but then you can see other things within it. And I actually think that is what's going to be in 2018. Because once you're inside these goggles, it's a little scary because you're in your own world and you don't know what's going on outside it. But augmented reality, you can actually still see other people. And so can you imagine with Facebook, if you could still be in doing Facebook and then you see people outside as well as within? It's pretty cool. It's very cool. Actually, my dream, my dream is something that we're going to talk about in a second. All right, right here. How many of you guys have seen Black Mirror? Coolest show ever, but a little scary. Every time, I can only watch one episode at a time because it's like, oh, it gets a little dark, right? And you're like, oh, that's a little bit, that's a little bit scary, but that might be our future, right? So in, um, in Black Mirror, people rate you in society, okay? And it's based on how many likes you get um, is how much influence you have and how you can do different things. It's fascinating. It's a really great episode. If you haven't seen this one, highly recommend it. Um, and so uh, you can see here, it says on 3.1, uh, double damage. This, and you, she was doing things in the movie and, and, her da and she started going down in numbers, okay? Down in numbers. So we think that social media doesn't matter, but how we influence others does matter, okay? It does matter. Even if we don't want it to matter, it does. And we all have businesses, and we want to sell things, okay? We want to sell things. And how are we going to do that without influence? And so one of the things I wanted to teach you today were some really quick ways to do that. Now, I know you guys have been really, really busy um, with uh, WordCamp. I could give you so many tips, uh, literally three hours worth, but because this is a lightning session, this is uh, very limited, all right? So we can do the next one, because I'm not going to show the video. So you're really stressed out now, because you're like, I'm not doing this on social media, and I should be, all right? So how can we be happier on users of social media? And I wanted to share some cool apps with you about being happier, okay, about being happier. These are the coolest things ever, okay? So you guys might have been wondering what I dropped here. I Hopefully these still function. So do you guys know what this is? Do you know what this is? So this is a meditation device. And so it actually can track my brain waves to see whether or not I'm meditating correctly. It's the coolest thing. I'm really into yoga, all right? And doing social media, um, I'm, on, I'm engaged all the time, but at the same time, I have to take time off to make, sure, to make sure that I am able to continue to create great social media, all right? Because we all need breaks. We can't be on all the time. And so I purposely sometimes take breaks. So this device actually uh, calculates your brain waves and you use it with your phone, it's an app. And, and when you're using it, if you're doing really well meditating, 
um, you get birds. Birds start chirping. If you're doing badly, you hear thunderstorms. Okay, and if you are kind of like doing okay and going in the right direction, you hear waves. You can change the sounds, but those are the sounds I prefer, okay? So, and I don't get that many birds because I'm not a very Zen person, but I have hope for many birds, all right? And I continue to try to get birds. Um, so this is a cool device because it can really help you with your meditation. Um, and I really do think that taking a break from social media can be helpful sometimes. So these are some other, actually, can you go back? These are some other ones that you guys might want to check into besides Muse. There's Fabulous. Fabulous actually won awards this year um, for helping to make you happier. Um, it's a great app. It can give you reminders. And then the other one is um, Wiza. Wiza is like a therapist, okay? You can talk to them, and you don't even, they, you don't even know what they're saying. It's so cool. And they give you advice, and they're like, now you need to breathe. So uh, it's kind of fun. It's like a little chat box, basically, for happiness and social media. Uh, so it's, it's pretty cool. So hopefully you guys can check some of those out. So the final slide here for you guys. So manage your social media. Don't let your social media manage you. Manage your social media. Don't let your social media manage you. It's critically important. Um, you can't let your social media take over your life. And you have to say, how am I going to use this? Come up with a strategy and use that strategy. Schedule your tweets. Use Hootsuite. Really manage your time and have a strategy for how you're going to use social media for yourself as well as your business. And also schedule time to be in your Zen zone, okay? Do both. So before I go, I actually want to take a selfie with all of you, since I am a social media professor, all right? And I was hoping that we could do this as a group. Hold on. I don't think I can do it with the mic. Yes. <laughs> okay, the question was, how do you disconnect from Facebook if your clients are constantly there? Um, my answer is, uh, turn your Facebook off. Yeah, turn it off. I sometimes actually, when I go um, eating dinner, I'll just leave my phone somewhere not near me. Um, or I'll put it away purposely. I mean, we have to manage our phones. We have to manage it and we can't let it manage us. I have 350 students this semester writing to me on social media, and sometimes when I don't respond, it's Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, email, it's like all of them. So we have to decide when we're gonna respond. So I think that we have to manage that. Any other questions? Yes. Oh, what tools do I like? I mean, I use Hootsuite quite a bit. So Hootsuite, I schedule stuff to go out. There's constantly something going out. I have stuff scheduled until June. I, I know I'm pretty geeky like that, all right? So I schedule stuff out. Actually, I scheduled stuff in August before the semester started, knowing that I would be too busy from September until May to deal with it. 
So when I was off, I actually scheduled something to go out all year long. Now I might change those scheduled things, but I know there's gonna be something going out on no matter how busy I am, so. Decide what to schedule. So I, I come up with themes sometimes, but I, I come up with a schedule of content and like I'll have like for Sunday, for example, I have Compassion Sunday. Every Sunday I do something about how to be more compassionate. So I come up with themes for the week, like on Thursdays I do something about women empowerment. So I have different things that I do and I schedule out and then I'll sometimes change it depending on what I'm doing. Well, I try to do Saturdays, that's the day that I unplug, but now I'm teaching on Saturdays. <laughs> so, so it's a little bit harder, but usually it's one, I have one day a week. I try one day a week to like not do it too much. And if I am using it, sometimes it's just taking photos because I love taking photos for Instagram. How do I do it? I just, I just keep it away from me as much as possible, honestly. Yeah, one more? Okay, one more. Yeah, it's true. It's not as good to use Hootsuite as it is to actually post directly to the platform itself, but I still think it's better than not having anything go out at all. So that's the way I look at it. The headband I got um, online through Amazon, it's, uh, I think it was like a hundred something dollars because I was really excited because one of my friends at FIU is actually doing a study with it. So I don't think, I can maybe do one more. Oh, filtering your photos? Um, Photoshop Express, I really recommend using that. All right, guys, I can't go any longer. If you have questions, feel free to ask online. Follow me on social media. Thank you.